I'm wondering if you think that a peak usage or a nights and weekends sort of approach to broadband billing, as opposed to like a, a flat monthly cap that doesn't really smooth out peaks, um, not only would do a better job at you know smoothing out peak usage, but uh, do you think that such an approach could provide the kinds of uh, market segmentation and price discrimination uh, benefits that uh, you all have cited today? I can go. Sure. Uh, so I, I think to the extent that we're worried about congestion, I think peak pricing would be a much better solution to you know, get traffic off the network at times when additional consumption is actually harming other people. Right? <coughs> the problem, I think, is uh, for peak pricing to work, you have to have peaks with regularity. I think we see peaks with regularity in the fixed space. That's what we see with sort of the, the 9 to 11.30 period. Um, but I, I don't think congestion is as big a problem in fixed uh, broadband, right? Um, the latest uh, broadband speed surveys that the FCC's come out with suggest that there's not a whole lot of slowdown at peak periods on the fixed side. Now, on the wireless side, congestion's a big issue. But the problem on the wireless side is that peaks and valleys aren't really predictable, right? They happen in spurts. Um, and so th there's no predictability. Without predictability, you can't tell consumers, right? Between six and nine is when you incur greater costs. Don't use your wireless plan during those periods. And so I think that's what I meant when I said I think there's technological challenges to putting peak pricing in place right now. Yeah, um, I, I'm more skeptical about the utility of, of peak load pricing. If we look at the way it's used in like the old phone networks, or electricity networks, you've always applied the peak load pricing at a very high level of the network we have aggregated demands over many, many service territories, and it's predictable at that level. Right? If you get down to the local neighborhood, it's not clear what neighborhoods are going to have peaks at what times. And there's a lot of different, a lot of variation among, in the demographics and the incomes and so forth that drive the usage in neighborhoods. If we're starting to apply something that is common to everybody, we risk, uh, you know, we run the risk then of imposing restrictions on people that otherwise wouldn't be imposing any congestion. And it's, I mean, it's the reason why when we look at congestion management in highway systems, it's always the big commuter um, through fares that get regulated. You know, it's, it's Route 66 where you have your HOV lanes and what, at 3 o'clock, I used to live here, and suddenly uh, you can't, you know, it becomes a parking lot and it used to be a freeway. Um, on the other hand, that causes people to spill over on the side streets, but we don't regulate the side streets because it's too costly to monitor that, to figure out which ones people are going. If you try to go here, they'll change it here, they'll go somewhere else. And my concern is the transaction cost of putting something at the neighborhood level would just be overwhelming. So I'm not, it's not clear to me that peak load pricing is really a, a, an effective solution.